Leslie Ann. And what I thought we would do this morning is uh, work on the chair. So we're going to work particularly on the neck, the shoulders, and moving the spine, and then some uh, knee and ankle. But we're going to stay pretty much rooted on the chair, a couple of standing poses. Um, and if you have any feedback about this kind of chair yoga, feel free to uh, let me know after class. Um, so we're going to begin with a breathing exercise, and we're going to stand for this. And uh, yesterday, Andrew and I were canoeing in Frontenac Provincial Park, and we were fortunate enough to see a couple of herons. So I've decided to create a breathing exercise that mimics the flight pattern of the great blue heron. So herons, when they fly, very rarely extend their wings past horizontal. They're very uh, easy flyers. So we're going to uh, involve pranayama, a breath practice, and some wing extensions. So we begin by just taking your hands to the side, and we're going to flex the wrists in, and then using the abductor muscles, we're going to take the arms out to shoulder, and then we're going to flex the wrists up, and using the adductor muscles, we're going to pull wings down. Going to inhale up and then exhale. And keep your jaw relaxed, your chin parallel to the floor, and really imagine that you're working through a strong wind. So really sending the energy from the heart out the arms into the wrists. Flex and extend. This time, taking a deep inhale on the way up. When you get to the top, straighten your hands out and pause, holding the breath, and then exhale. And hold the breath out, and then inhale. so that your sitting bones are firmly rooted on the chair. Take your feet about hip width apart. Make sure that your feet are parallel with your toes pointing toward the short end of the mat. Place your palms on the knees. And we'll just begin by making some very gentle circles. Circling through the hips. Center, change directions. And then when you come to center, change directions again, this time making the circles bigger and get your head involved as you come forward, tuck your chin down, can you gently lift your head toward the back. Make sure when your head goes to the back of your body that you're being very gentle with neck and then when you come to center change directions okay. and then this time when you come down forward pause inhale and then on the exhale just press your palms into your knees and bring yourself up to sit I'm going to take the fingers and interlace them together and just place your hands on top of your head. Throughout this next piece, just make sure that you're not putting any pressure on your hands so that we're not pressing into the head at all. We're just keeping the hands here to keep our elbows in position. What we're going to do now, this is called the laptop pose. As you can tell, it's a uh, rather recent invention in yoga. It's to help release the tension that you create when you're leaning forward keyboarding or using your mouse. So what we're going to do is keep the upper part of the body, the head and the shoulders, as still as possible and begin lifting the left elbow toward the ceiling. And then lower and then lift the right elbow. Trying to 
keep the upper body, it's not a side twist. So what we're doing is actually releasing the intercostal muscles along the side of the ribs, as well as releasing the shoulder. And just go back and forth like this. See if you can keep your jaw relaxed, chin parallel to the floor. You might like to close your eyes, feel the stretch in the body. Just keep going gently back and forth. And then you can come to center with your elbows. Just release your hands down. We're going to keep moving down the spine. And this next movement is called a spinal shift. So what we're going to do is take your hands in front of your heart like this. You can touch your finger middle fingers together. We're going to shift the spine, but we're not going to move the rest of the body. So if your head and neck want to get involved, just gently remind them to stay still. And keep your pelvis and your hips still as well. So we're just going to shift the spine from side to side. Your upper body is staying stable. And you may find when you first do this that you're not being able to move very far. This sideways shift of the spine is one of the first movements that you begin to lose when you use mobility. So if you were to go to a senior's residence and ask people to do this, very few people would be able to actually shift. The amazing thing about the body is though if you concentrate on moving the spine, keeping the head still, that it doesn't take very long for the body to remember and begin to repatterning both your brain and your muscles. This is also a very uh, good asana to practice if you have sore lower back. You can probably feel it pulling along the sacrum. You might find if you close your eyes and you visualize the spine shifting from side to side. Keep your sitting bones rooting down into the chair, the jaw soft and relaxed. And then once more from to each side, and then just release your arms down. Give your hands a little shake. And we'll bring the shoulders up to the ears and then push your shoulders to the back and then let your shoulder blades slide down your spine. And then once more up around and we'll do it one more time really scrunch right up to the ears push the shoulders back and then slide a yoga teacher who used to say let your shoulder blades slide like two bars of soap down your back i've never had two bars of soap slide down my back but presumably this is what it feels like okay now we're going to Take our legs, our feet slightly farther apart. Place your palms on your knees and take your elbows out to the side. Once more, keeping the spine straight, take a nice deep inhale, root the sitting bones into the chair. And we're going to move from side to side and this pattern is called the Egyptian. So we're just gonna shift from side to side. See if you can keep moving your torso, but keeping your head and neck as stable as possible. And you can probably feel this pulling along the mid-back and spine. So what we're going to do is 
root down into both feet, put your hands on your knees, and then shift your weight onto the left side and lift your right pelvis, pressing into both feet, and then back to center, press into both sitting bones, and then shift to the other side, lift, your own pace following your breath with a little more speed, just rocking from side to side on your pelvis. And see if you can get a sense of your pelvis being two separate bones. And then come back to center. Now we're going to take the left hand Place it on the outside of the right knee. Using this as a bit of a wedge, press your knee into your palm. At the same time, lift the other hand, turn the hand, and just hold on to the back of your chair. Then take an inhale, press into your sitting bones so that your spine is lifting. And on the exhale, beginning at the navel, begin to twist toward the back. Then when you've twisted as far as your body wishes to twist this morning, you can turn your head to look over your back shoulder. Turn your head very gently, being careful with the neck. Take a deep, complete breath in this twist. Feel how your breath is actually able to find its way into the twisting of the body. Then inhale, and on the next exhale, come back to sleep. Change hands so that the opposite palm is on your knee. Pressing your knee into your palm and your palm into your knee. Lift, exhale, twist. Hold on to the back of the chair. And twist as far around as you like. It feels comfortable. Take a deep breath. Feel your spine growing tall through the crown of your head. And then on the next exhale, release and come back to center. <clears throat> Slide the palms of your hands down the front of your knees. Inhale and beginning the movement from your heart, pull your heart up forward. <clears throat> Keep your chin parallel or slightly tucked so your chin isn't jutting toward the ceiling. And feel the nice slight back bend in your lumbar spine. And then exhale and round. And then come back. But this time without bending forward, we're just going to work the lumbar spine by moving the spine into slight back bend and then curling the shoulders forward. Arms 
comes out to the side, and then just twist palms toward the ceiling. Bring your hands up overhead. Interlace your fingers. Turn the palms toward the ceiling. Press down on your sitting bones so that from the waist down, your spine is moving downward. The, from the waist up, your spine is moving. So we've moved the spine in just about every direction. So now we're going to stand for our balance pose. So we've been working through a series of balance poses that have been created by Dr. Baxter Bell, who's uh, in California. He sent an email on Sunday morning with a balance challenge for the week. Got an email from him this morning saying that due to technical difficulties, his video camera didn't work yesterday because it was the 4th of July. He wasn't able to uh, get it repaired. So I've created a balance pose this morning based on uh, yesterday when Andrew and I were sitting on an island in South Otter Lake. Just across the uh, island from us on the shore there was a great blue heron. I was watching this heron, so I thought that I'd use the heron not only its wings when it's flying, but its legs for the balance pose. When herons are standing in the water looking for fish, they stand on one leg. And some people suggest they stand on one leg because they pull their other leg up and it preserves body heat. Other people suggest they stand on one leg because when fish are swimming by and they only see one leg, they look less like a, a hunting bird than not. So we're going to Try this great hair and pose. Take your right leg and like the hair and does, bring it in so that it's under the midline of your body, so that all of your body weight is able to stand on one leg. Then we're going to take the other leg, lift it up, and then wrap your foot around your knee, but keep your knee pointing to we're going to, and if you need to use your arms to balance, that's fine. Wings. Wings, wings, okay. <laughs> so now we're going to take the arms up, keeping your balance. Interlace your fingers with your first finger and your thumb, pointing toward the ceiling, and then press your wrists like the herons. Okay. And take a deep inhale, and then. If you're having a bit of a balance challenge, you can stand to the side of your chair and just have one hand the back of the chair. Now we'll move to the other side. And as you know, the balance is often different on both sides of the body, so this will be an interesting challenge. Place the opposite foot under the midline of the body. Interlace your fingers and then turn your bill down. Dagger like bill down and then release. And let's try that once more on both sides. You need to send this one to Baxter Bell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so with the other foot, stand weight on the midline. And if you'd like a real challenge, after you've tipped your dagger like bill down, close your eyes. See how this changes the balance. And then open your eyes. Come down with the other foot. Centering the weight, midline of the body. Lifting the knee, wrapping the foot. Bring the long neck up. And then turn fingers down. And just close your eyes for a moment. And then come out. And you know that they've learned from teaching people how to balance. The more you challenge your balance by almost falling and regaining, the more you're repatterning your brain and the less likely you are to actually have a fall. So this is really good practice for next winter coming. <laughs> it's so great. So now we'll just sit back down. And we'll uh, just 
do a little bit of um, work with the chin. You might have noticed if you take your hand and feel just in the back of your neck here, you might feel a little bit of fat, or you might have seen people, I particularly noticed this on the bus the other day, people with great rolls of fat in the back of their neck. So I was kind of curious about what causes this fat, and found out that because we're spending so much time leaning forward, looking at computer screens, reading books, that the body is actually laying layers of fat down at the back of the neck to protect the neck. So we're going to do some strengthening of those very delicate, uh, well, strengthening the muscles around the really delicate neck bones. So I thought this was interesting too, because if you've ever looked at a heron when it's flying, it tucks its head in. So we're going to do another heron move. We're going to take two fingers, place two fingers on the chin, and jump the chin out as if you were staring at the computer screen, and then push the chin back so that your ears are right over the shoulder. You have a little bit of a double chin. Come forward, and then back. Forward, back, and once more forward, and back. And you might be able to feel this pulling along the back. So we'll do that three more times. Do it at your own pace, and you can imagine that you're a great blue here. And then just bring your hands down to your side. Keeping with the bird analogy, we're going to do what's called the sweet. So we're going to inhale and bring the right leg up. Turn over the ankle. Make sure that you, if, if that's too painful, you can just put your foot like that. Because this is, is working on keeping your, your hip open, so some people are not too flexible. So what we're going to do is make sure that you keep your foot flexed so that you're protecting your knee. And then very gently place your palm on the opposite knee. Don't use any pressure, but just suggest to your knee that it wants to move toward the ground by releasing in the hip. We're going to hold this for a couple of minutes, as you do in yin yoga. So while we're holding this position and encouraging this part of the body to relax and the muscles to release, we're going to distract ourselves a little by doing a little bit of Korean Dan Yoga. What we're going to do is called brain wave vibration. So we're going to stimulate the brain stem, the part where the brain stem uh, comes into the cerebellum. And what we're stimulating is the reticular activating system, which is responsible for waking and sleeping. So if you do this kind of brainwave vibration, when you're sleepy, it'll wake you up, and when you're ready to go to sleep at night, it'll help you sleep. So what we're doing is just moving the head slightly from side to side. It's not a neck exercise. Take your awareness, you can close your eyes, and take your awareness inside your head to the place where the brain stem is rising up into the skull. And just imagine that you can visualize or see this part of your brain vibrating. And just gently back and forth. And then bring your head to stillness. And then we'll inhale, knee up, and turn this leg over, place your palm. Make sure your foot's flexed so you're protecting your knee. Feel your sitting bones rooting down into the seat of the chair. Feel your spine growing tall. Inhale. 
We will hold this position for a few moments. And this time we're going to just gently close the eyes and vibrate the head by just moving it back and forth. From front to back. Close the eyes and just be gently vibrating the brain skin. Strange as it may seem, when I started doing this head vibrating practice, I started to sleep incredibly well. And then bring your head to stillness. And then bring your feet down. And this time we'll just lift up on the toes and then let the heels drop. Up on the toes. Drop the toes. Let's drop. Just feel yourself sitting firmly on the chair. Feel the crown of your head rising. See if you can sense into your body and feel this particular piece of interesting thing about the body. When you inhale, your spine actually comes closer together, the vertebrae come closer together, and as you exhale, your spine expands. So close your eyes and take two or three deep inhalations. It's, it's counterintuitive, but see if you can feel that as you exhale, the spine is actually lengthening. The diaphragm is moving. feels because of the motion of the lungs that your spine would be expanding on the inhale. It's actually the opposite. Keep your shoulders soft and relaxed. Also relax your face. And see if your tongue is resting on the floor of your mouth so that your tongue is relaxed. out once again to the corners of the mat. Make sure that you're sitting right on the edge of the seat of the chair. Feet parallel to the mat. We're going to place your thumbs in the crease of your hips. We're going to bend forward, but we're going to flex from the hips. So what we're going to do is lift up and roll over the thumbs leading with the heart and come forward just until you feel some resistance or your back begins to round. So you're probably going to come about this far forward. Take a deep breath and then on the next inhale, press into your thumbs. Take your thumbs out and a little shake. Bring your hands down in front of your body. This time we're going to do the same forward bend, but you're going to imagine that your thumbs are still in the hip creases. So begin by inhaling, lifting up, rolling over, and your fingertips may come down to the ground. Take a deep breath, and let your head forward, hang heavy so you're tractioning along the back of your neck. You can nod your head yes, shake your head no, come back to center. Press your fingertips into the mat, inhale, and on the exhale, press into your fingers and pop. Again, lifting up over the imaginary thumbs in your hip 
increases. Come forward just until your back starts to round or you start to feel kind of a resistance in your back. And let your hands drop toward the mat. And then walk your hands in to your feet. Let the head drop. Press your elbows into your knees at the same time, pressing your knees into your elbows. And let your head relax and your head hang really heavy. So you're pressing the knees, elbows together with the head relaxed. Then release the elbows and knees. And you can gently walk your hands a little bit farther back. Maybe even grab onto the legs of the chair and just let your whole body weight lean forward. And walk your hands back to your feet. Press your fingertips into the mat. Inhale, and then as you exhale, pump your fingers up. And then once more, we'll roll the shoulders back and around. And then we'll roll them just once forward. We spend a lot of time with our shoulders rolled forward, so we don't really need to practice that movement too much. Walk your feet back in so that they're about hip width apart. Then we're going to do just a little bit of uh, exercise working on the knees. And what we want to do is imagine that you have a line that goes from your ankle, your knee, and your hip. So you want to keep this line perfectly straight so we don't want the knees to roll in or roll out. To keep this imaginary alignment. Slide the right heel out. Inhale and lift. Lower. And then slide back. Slide the other heel out. Lift. Lower. And slide back. Once more, slide the heel out. Lift. It doesn't matter where you lift to, wherever is comfortable, lift. And then lower. Back. And once more, slide the heel out. Lift. Lower. Slide the heel out once more. And as you inhale, press your toes away from your body, trying to keep that alignment. And then exhale and pull your toes in toward your body. Inhale, press away. Exhale, press toward. And once more, pressing away. And then toward. Lift your foot and just make a circle in one direction with your ankle, keeping your knee stationary, and then make the circle in the other direction. Place your heel down from the mat, then lift your leg again, and this time curl your toes in, and then flex your toes back. Curl your toes in, flex your toes back. Bring your heel down. Slide, Slide the opposite leg out. Press the toes away from the body as so we inhale. Exhale, pull the toes back toward the heart. Inhale, press the toes away from the body. Scrunch up, relax, 
And then lift the foot slightly off the ground once more, curling the toes together. And then pulling them back, curling the toes together. Down, slide your feet in, look at this great top. Now we're going to roll on to the side of the foot. We're going to do this sitting and then we'll take this motion down onto the mat. So we're going to take the right foot, walk your feet out close to the edge of the mat, not right out to the edge, leave a little bit of a cushion. Take your right leg, your right knee, and just roll the foot onto the edge of the foot, and then roll back upright, and then roll in once more. Roll out. You might be able to sense into your body and feel how this is releasing muscles right up into your hip flexors. And once more, onto the outer edge, and then onto the inner edge of the foot, and then bring the foot up to stand. Same thing with the other foot, rolling to the right out onto the outer edge. bones rooted into the chair so that it's releasing here, not rocking the pelvis. And then just come back up. One more short thing that we'll do before we move off the chair is if you've been sitting for a long time and you're kind of stiff, a really nice way to begin to engage your muscles before you stand up is to take the palm to the outer edge of the knee, push the knee against the palm, using as much muscle power as you have available, and then release take the palm to the inside of the knee, push the knee, engage the palm. You might be able to feel this pulling across the back, across the sacrum, and release. Once more, the opposite side, push the palm into the knee, Take your hand to the inside of the first knee, roll the knee, and roll onto the outside of the foot. Then take the palm to the outside of the knee, roll back in across the midline of the body. And once more, to the outside, and to the inside.
So now we're going to come down onto the mat, come down onto your back on the mat. And you can just move your chair to the side or deep, deep the chair. We can use the chair again, so. So just lie back on the mat. Just take a moment, let your back settle and release. Bend both of your knees so your feet are planted on the mat, quite fairly close to your body, knees pointing to the ceiling. Take your right knee and bring it up toward your chest. And then turn your right foot so that you're crossing over the thigh. So you're back in pigeon pose so that your ankle is over the thigh. Perfect. And just relax. You can take your right palm onto the right knee and just gently suggest to your knee that it move toward the front of the room. Make sure that your right foot is flexed so you're protecting the knee. Then take both of your palms and place them on your left thigh. As you inhale, slide your fingers your hands around your thigh to interlace your fingers as you lift your left foot off the ground and you bring both of your knees toward your chest. Inhale and as you exhale, your knees may come a little bit closer to your chest. You can use your right elbow to On the next exhale, bring your foot, left foot down to the mat. Release your hands. Take your arms out to the side. And let your leg, right leg, come off of your left thigh. Bring both feet to the mat, both knees pointing toward the ceiling. And then on the next inhale, bring the left knee up toward the chest and turn the left foot over top of the right thigh. Keep your left foot flexed so the toes are pointing to the ceiling so the patella is running along the groove of the femur and isn't twisted. Use your hand to just gently open the left knee. Place your palms on your right thigh. And as you inhale and lift the right knee, right leg off the mat toward the chest, let your hands slide around and your fingers interlace behind your thigh. And just rest in this reverse pigeon. Inhale deeply, feeling your back of your heart pressing into the mat. Keep both feet flexed. And you can use your elbow to gently On the next exhale, bring your foot down, release your hands, and bring both feet to standing on the mat with the knees pointing toward the ceiling. A movement that we quite often do in yoga after we've been working with the back and the spine to release the spine is called windshield wipering the legs, another ancient yoga pose. So what we normally do is press the feet into the mat and then very gently let the knees fall toward the right and the left as if they were windshield wipers on the car. See if you can feel into the back of your body so that you're pressing your lumbar spine into the mat, massaging along the back of your sacrum. 
see if you can feel the muscles that are active in this particular movement. And then come back to stillness with your knees pointing toward the ceiling. Walk your feet apart so that your feet are out at the corners of your mat, edge of your mat. Now we're going to do the same motion that we did sitting in the chair with rolling onto the sides of the feet and see how this changes and actually deepens the relaxation that you feel in the back of the muscles. So take your attention, your awareness to your right leg, up the right hip, pressing your lower back into the mat, and then very gently take the right knee up to the side as you roll onto the outer edge of your right foot. And then slowly roll back to center and then roll onto the inner edge of your right foot as your knee falls toward the midline. And then just slowly roll back and forth on your feet. See if you can feel a release in the muscles across the back of the sacrum. You might be able to feel this movement right up into your shoulders. Gently press the back of your skull, the occipital bone, into the mat. You might feel the release right up into the neck. And then repeat this once more from the outside to the inside of the foot. And then bring your foot to stillness planted on the mat. And then begin to gently roll the left knee out, roll out onto the outer edge of the left foot, and then roll back onto the inner edge, letting the knee fall across the midline, and back. And just keep gently rolling, keep your jaw really relaxed. Make sure your chin is slightly tucked so that it's not jutting up toward the ceiling, causing tension in your neck. And feel your head pressing into the mat. And then bring both, bring your knee to stillness. And now we'll move by taking both knees toward the right, rolling onto the outside of one foot and the inside of the other, and then back up across the midline. And just gently shift from side to side, and if you like, you can slowly roll your head in the same direction as you And just for fun, next time you come to center, roll your knees in one direction and roll your head in the opposite direction. And figure out which movement your body likes best. And then come to stillness. I'm going to very gently without putting any strain or pressure on your body, come back up to sitting. So you may want to roll over onto your right side and then press your hands in to so your sitting. I'm going to take the chair again. Place the chair on the mat so that it doesn't slip. Figure out how you're going to get yourself into this next position. There's a variety of ways of doing it. You can come to the side, down onto your back. And then we're just going to flip and put our legs up on the chair. You might want to use your shoulders to rock yourself back. If you find that your chin is jutting up, take the end of your mat and just roll it a little bit make a little bit of a cushion for your head so that your chin is nicely tucked. 
take your arms out to the side about 30 degrees away from your body. Walk your feet to the edges of the, the sides of the chair so that you have a little bit of room. You can turn your toes in to touch each other and then turn your toes out. And then bring your toes to pointing toward the ceiling. Turn your palms in toward the floor. And then turn your palms up to the ceiling. And once more, this time as you turn your palms in toward the floor, and then turn them up to the ceiling, feel the opening that happens across the collarbones as you turn your palms up. And then you can just very gently roll your head from side to side. And then let your head find a place of stillness in the center of the mat. Let your body sink into the mat. Feel your lower back, your lumbar spine moving with each exhale toward the mat. Feel the back of your heart spreading, pressing into the mat. Inhale and feel the energy moving with the oxygen in the blood through the body. And with each exhale, feel yourself sinking a little bit deeper into the mat. Let go of all of the tension in your body. Let your muscles relax. You don't need to do anything to support yourself. You're being completely held and supported by the earth. Feel your breath begin to deepen into your body. Feel yourself breathing from the inside of the nostrils right down to the tips of your toes. Feel the prana or life force bringing some movement. Give your toes a little bit of a wiggle. Feel the energy moving from the heart down across the collarbones, down your arms into your and let this energy move as you wiggle your fingers. Take your head gently from side to side. And now figure out how on the next inhale and exhale, you're going to take your legs as carefully and gently as you can from the seat of the chair.
Tip your head toward your heart. Inhale, raise the head. Just take a moment to turn to each other and say thank you for practicing with me this morning. Thank you. Thank you. See you next week.